So 55 years since this has been going on. I don't mean to sound impudent, but is this the longest relationship in your life? <laughs> uh, not quite. Uh, not quite. I have a relationship with a f an English football team which started when I was seven. Have they broken your heart? Yes, constantly. Well, see. So that prepares you for filmmaking, right? Not quite as brutal. <laughs> in the course of making this, you had to have felt over the years and perhaps all at the same time like a friend, a confessor, a provocateur, as well as a filmmaker. Yes, a father figure or someone they can take, uh, take, take their uh, bad feelings on. Out of? What, did, what did, am I babbling about here? Did, well, did the, was the relationship sustained over the seven years in between each? No, I, we le left it alone between them. You know, I, I didn't want to be uh, shadowing their lives. Um, I didn't want them to be thinking that they have to put on a performance for me. And so even if lots of interesting things happened in a seventh year, if it didn't kind of fit into what was clearly going on, then I would, well, wouldn't touch it. Otherwise, these films would, you'd be here for three weeks watching it. <laughs> did they reach out to you at all, or did they try to get about with their lives and in those seven years in between? Such a magical number, seven yeah, years. Um, no, but we, we kind of ch check up with them you know, once a year, just to make sure all is well, or they t will tell us if things aren't well, you know, things that w would affect the work we're going to do. So, but I, I just didn't want to be in their lives all the time. You know, I, I wanted to s be in the audience's point of view, to see them, my God, they've changed and all that kind of stuff. Whereas if I had a close relationship with them, <coughs> I'd know all that. This was the ninth in the series. I hadn't seen the earlier ones, but just watching this one, I felt so emotionally invested in who they were and how their lives had changed that I can imagine that's only a fraction of how you felt. Yeah, but I mean, <coughs> I, I, I think we're, we, we sort of got it right. It's got a good balance to it. You know, it's, it's, because there's so much material, it's ludicrous. And that's only when we only film them, you know, every seventh year. So, you know, you, you want to keep keep it swift and, and you know, not to fill the film up with stuff that you can possibly follow. You know, that everything has to be kind of fixed on the seventh, seventh year. Well, now, obviously, there's things uh, that I cheated on, and like when Bruce got married, we went to sh shoot that or something like that. But I try and keep it as honorable as I can to the seventh year. Otherwise, I'd have so much material, I'd kill myself. <laughs> this has been a glimpse of Britain's future. Was it really? Because Britain is so different nowadays when it seems yeah, to come to class and race and... Yeah, I think so. So their lives are different than mine was when I was growing up. You know, England has changed, you know, dramatically. Um, and we 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 kind of fortunately got a nice period with it. You know, there was huge change. You can hardly believe what uh, England was like in. When, when we started, you know, in whatever that was, 1964, it was a different world. Um, not necessarily a worse world, or not necessarily a better word now, but it, it's, uh, it has changed a lot. I was thinking how immensely different it would look if you were to start now. Yeah. with the racial composition, the, the sure. number of men versus women, boys versus girls. Well, I mean, I got caught out with some of that. I mean, the big thing that uh, was uh, a, a, <coughs> not a disaster for me, God, for, God forbid, but, you know, women came f coming into society roaring. And, you know, I, we sort of, we didn't miss it, but it, it happened so quickly when you think of the 14 people that we chose, only four were women. I mean, you know, you wouldn't like that, would you, if you said it's, uh, there's 
you know, there was, uh, it was run by men. Well, it, well, it was. Um, but it's once, you, once I got the thing in motion, there's no way out of it. I mean, I cheated, you know, I used the wives of some of the boys who were very interesting. Well, over the course of all of this, while you were doing this, you were doing all of your films. You were yeah. doing television. You've done yeah. Ray Donovan. You've done Masters of Sex. So talk a little bit about moving from each of those media, from documentaries to feature films to television, and yeah. how that works in your life and why you sought that balance. Well, that's how my l life in the entertainment business started. You know, I went into... Granada Television, who were a terrific place to be, and you know, there's, this is their their, their work uh, and all that. So there was a lot of opportunity, and, and Granada was a very red hot place. You know, the B BBC had been running the world, as it were, or at least the British world, and um, making a bit of a mess of it and looking, making it all Victorian and all that, and then Granada came in and farted all over the place <laughs> and really changed, um, you know, changed. A word BBC would never use, of course. No, of course not. They wouldn't even know what I'm just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, they're great people, and, and of course, they pulled themselves together and, and, and quickly to resume their place at the top of the, top of the world, but no... Uh, but really, they were asleep, and then Granada came along and woke them up, and I was part of the waking up of the BBC. <laughs> Sounds silly, don't it? But it was so. You know that that's how it happened. Michael Apted, we'll see you in seven years. Yeah. Won't you please thank him? <laughs>